Hi guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rusty78609, just leaving Wally World, Walmart, in Marble Falls, Texas, where I went and got me some Cera CeraVe cream. The dermatologist that I went to recommended that, and I'm going out west where it's going to be really dry. I have some at home, but I don't want to run out, and I don't want to go to Walmart out there and find out they don't carry it. So I got it. Enough said about that. Now moving right along to me and my arrow rolling down the highway, going nowhere. Nowhere to go and no timetable is not a bad schedule, okay? Is that a good plan? Yes, it is. Bump, bump, bump. But tomorrow morning, approximately 10 a.m., we probably will pull out because I'm in absolutely no hurry at all. I've got about a four hour leisurely pull at 55 miles an hour to Ira and Texas and that's even allowing for stopping to have a nice lunch inside of my travel trailer named Arrow, my 16 foot 2018 Coachman Clipper Cadet front bedroom, 16 feet of luxury, I'm telling you. It has absolutely nothing. No microwave. No three-way fridge. Got a one-way fridge. And uh, no roof AC. Got a window AC. But I'm just cruising here, guys, and, and talking to myself, and y'all just happen to be listening. Some of you. Both of you. One of you, anyway. There's a guy that's got him a Jayco 16-footer. And he's got two kids and his wife. That ought to be a fun group. That's when you get to know your family real well. Sometimes that can be a winning experience, and sometimes it can be a losing experience. And that's the same way for couples that go on the road in an RV that used to have a great big home where they could get away from each other, and now then all, they're, all of a sudden they're in a motor home or an R, a travel trailer that they can't get out of each other's sight. So if you're going to go RVing as a couple, I think you better really like each other. I'm trying to get this camera right. That just might be a little better. I don't know. Anyway, it's a nice day. It's 66 degrees here in Central Texas at 9.45 a.m. Central Standard Time. Oh, that's not the correct. Actually, it's 10.45 because the clocks were turned forward last night at 2 a.m. And I know everybody got up at 2 a.m., went immediately to their one clock that doesn't automatically change and changed it. You know, everything else, you know, I, my truck doesn't change it automatically. But the good thing about that is, for me, since I'm going to be traveling west into another time zone, I'm going to be going from central standard time zone to mountain standard time zone, where normally when you do that, you have to turn your clocks back one hour. Well, since I didn't, won't turn my clock forward one hour, when I get into New Mexico, I won't have to turn it back one hour. So we'll be even Steven on the time. My body clock will not change in Mountain Standard Time. Isn't that just wonderful? Answer, yes. I do not need to go to the grocery store today. I did yesterday, got a few things, thanks to, thanks to Tess and her little gift card to H-E-B she sent me and I used it, thank you very much. And all the other stuff that was sent to me, the popcorn, the candy, the almonds and everything else, and the two gallon jug, all of that good stuff I appreciate. And for all of you that are using the Amazon link, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or this, yeah, this trip is brought to you, my, my trip that I'm going on is brought to you by you. <laughs> If it wasn't for both of you viewers and, and the people that use the Amazon link, I'd be sitting at home in my 16-foot RV looking out the window like a bird in a nest. No, that's the enabler. That is the enabler. This is Marble Falls, Texas, guys, for you new guys and population about 6,000 people approximately. In central Texas, west northwest of Austin, got a community near here called Horseshoe Bay Resort. 
And anytime they throw in that word resort, you know the price of everything just went up 50%. But now we're heading back to home base, which will be remodeled. I'm going to try to pass a car. This is going to be tight. The race is on. I'm going 38, 39, 40, 41. Well, it looks like he's got me because I'd have to. Well, I think I can get him. I want to pass him without getting over 45. Can I do it? It's close. The race is on. I'm going 44. But now the speed limit's 50, so I'm going to go 53. I got him now. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it, guys. Life is a piece of cake. Okay, and then I'll get up to my cruising speed, like an airplane at their cruising elevation. My cruising speed in my Ram pickup is about 55 miles an hour, and I'm at the cruising speed now. And we put it on cruise, and my fuel economy right now is 24.8. I average, average about 25, sometimes, it, it, it's right around, if a round number is 25, it's pretty close, towing about half that, not quite anymore, because at 55, I found out, towing my travel trailer, when I towed it to get it, the water heater repaired, which, thank goodness, that's fixed, uh, yeah, I got about 14 and a half, that's pretty good. And I'm lucky I didn't go leave today to go out to Iran because the wind is out of the north, the nooth, and gusting, and I'd have been pulling right into it. Does that make a difference? Ho, 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 ho. Yes, it does. It will cut your gasoline uh, my, miles per gallon by 30% just real quick. I'm telling you, but tomorrow the wind is supposed to be fairly calm, and what there is is going to be the prevailing wind out of the southeast and southwest. And I'm headed north, or excuse me, yeah, kind of west northwest, and that's the way it goes. So on and on. I'm just cruising this here, guys. And uh, what else is going on? Yeah, I go out to Iran. I go through Lano. I go through Mason, Texas. I go through Menard, M-E-N-A-R-D. -E and in Menard, I get on 190 uh, and go west to El Dorado and then Iran to the city park. But the trick is on 190, as you're going to El Dorado, they don't pronounce it El Dorado. They pronounce it El Dorado. Why, I don't know. There is a fork in the road in the middle of nowhere, and you got to go left and stay on 190. And, and it, you know, it, it forks off to the left, but it's so easy to go straight. It, it, the signage is virtually non-existent. You know, there's one little sign about as big as your fist that says 190, okay? And so if you're, and it's easy to be daydreaming because that road is a two-lane in the middle of nowhere. There's no traffic, nothing, and so you just are basically brain dead driving in that area. I'm brain dead anyway. I can get to that before you guys. And so you, uh, I missed it one time. I did. I missed that left turn in my Prius. I was going out west camping. And anyway, I just I kept driving and driving. I thought, you know, that's strange. I don't remember this. And sure enough, I came into a town that I had never been to before. And I was about 50 miles in the wrong direction. But has that ever happened before? Oh, about a thousand. You know, I, I, you know, I used to take shortcuts. I don't do it much anymore, if ever, because I found out that my shortcuts end up to be long cuts real quick because it looks like it's about an inch on the map and it turns out to go through dirt roads, canyons, mountains. Yeah, it's short, all right. About two hours longer. I took a shortcut one time through the White Mountains, I think they're called. It's near, it's been near Morinci and uh, Arizona, in the western, or excuse me, eastern part of the state, near the New Mexico border, kind of central. There's a 
range of mountains in there. Oh yeah, I took one of my shortcuts there. Oh my God, I crossed the Continental Divide in that mountain range four times. And I was pulling a travel trailer. Oh God, it was a total disaster. By the time I got into Deming, where I was planning on spending the night, my, you, could, you had to pry my fingers off the steering wheel. Anyway, just rambling on here, guys. Gasoline here is 239, and I just bought it at Walmart in uh, Marble Falls for 216. Okay, big difference. Big difference. But you know, whenever you come into a little town like this, you know these guys are probably the same family. You know, and this is, and I always call it like you know there'll be a. If you go into a town, the first gas station you see, if it says 229, you can almost, you almost know that that's a 229 town. The gas prices aren't going to vary much unless there's a Walmart. And then maybe. But here we go, guys. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I've got everything pretty well. I've got plenty of water. i got uh, batteries are charged up or will be. They're charging as we speak. Not much today, but we'll be okay. It's amazing. Uh, those uh, uh, ZAMP 60-watt panels, I've got two of them, a port suitcase portable, uh, 120 watts. Believe me, on cloudy days, they do pretty good. They really do. They'll put out about 5 amps or 6 amps on cloudy days. I've noticed that. And that little old AGM battery is just sucking it up, and it's full. I'm loving it. And my lead-acid battery, I've charged it once not much i charged it for about an hour and it showed full so that was okay with me and that's the only time i've charged it in nine dry camping days of course i towed the rv once to georgetown and then back to the home base and while you're towing there is some charge going into the battery i don't know how much but it's adequate because when i got back from georgetown I checked it and it was full. So, you know, what can I say? I, it may be that just towing the travel trailer will keep the battery full. Uh, I don't Because I don't use the RV battery much. Uh, I will use it starting tomorrow at, for the following. One, I will use the Alexa since it plugs into a USB port and not use the Google Home device because it, it has to be plugged into 110, which means I'd have to use it with my inverter and I really don't want to use the inverter unless I have to because it uses a little energy itself and uh, I'll probably just use it when I want to watch uh, YouTube uh, movies and stuff and that's about it and what else uh, I also use uh, the RV battery for the LED lights the Max Air Max fan in the vent in the bathroom uh, what else and that's it Oh, the 12 volt pump but i don't use the, the pump much and i don't use the max air fan much or haven't haven't had to but it's there if i need to and up to up to level three on the max air it appears that it uses about a half amp an hour on speeds up to three after that it supposedly goes up and the Dometic CF-18 refrigerator, which is on the AGM battery, uses an average of about a half amp an hour also. And that's wonderful because I use a total, well, let's, let's talk about watts. I use a total of, on the ZAMP solar system using the AGM battery, on that separate system, I use about 300 watts a day max, max. What that means is, since I have a 120 watt panel, which is putting out, say, let's just say we average 80 uh, watts, uh, then we're getting about three and a half hours the battery is full, and that's about what it's been. I mean, it, uh, whenever the battery's down any, after a couple hours it shows full, and then what I do then is, if I think about it, I'll go ahead and hook it up to the lead acid battery and uh, let it go ahead and do a little charging while we got sunlight. But it's all working out. And you, it's amazing and to me. And I, I use that word amazing a lot, and I don't know why. I just do. It's the way it is. It's like a lot of other things I do. But I, I'm finding that 
as as you do things that you know, like I've made a change. I, I'm you know, completely off grid. I have to you know get water. I have to be sure the batteries are charged. You know what I mean. But after a few days, and it doesn't take long, or at least it doesn't take me long, uh, you have developed those routines that match that new environment. I mean, we are very adaptive creatures, or at least I am. Maybe it's because I've done it a lot, but. No, it's, it, I'm, I'm, and it's so easy. I mean, it just becomes part of the day. You know, you poop in a bag, tie it in a knot, put it out on the ground. When you go buy a trash can, you drop it in there. That ends that. That ends that poop. And uh, what else? And, you know, and you, you set the panels out about 11 o'clock in the morning when it's, you, know, you get the best sun. The best sun starts about 10.30 or 11 and goes till about 4 or 5 in the evening. That's your peak hours, at least in my opinion, which is worth nothing. And uh, so, yeah, I, I try to get them out, get all my, quote, rat killing done uh, in the morning. Like, I do my walking, and if I need to get water or groceries or stuff, I try to get that all done before 11 a.m. And then that way I can set the panels out, and I'm at home. I don't have to worry about, it, about jacking with them because I'm going to be right there. You know, I've already done my walking and stuff. And then if I want to go, you know, take a walk or do something, I can. But just, you know, kind of be within visual uh, of, of the RV most of the time so that uh, people won't disturb it. I, I don't think they will in the places I'm going to be, but you never know. You know, don't take a chance unless you have to, and I don't have to. So, but yeah, it's, it, 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 the pattern is good now. You know, I found out that the gallon jugs uh, work great. You know, the gallon jugs work great. I use the other two containers to refill the gallon jugs and then either add water to the uh, holding a fresh water tank on the RV or I have one sitting right by the kitchen sink and then occasionally I will use the 12 volt pump uh, you know if I'm going to do something that requires water to be running and uh, then uh, otherwise I just use the gallon jug to refill my drinking water bottle and, you know whatever else I do like you know making my tea and, and uh, oatmeal stuff in the morning what I do I just heat enough water in my teapot uh, to uh, provide the water for my oatmeal and the tea. Uh, I get the water boiling and then I just pour it over the oatmeal and chia and whatever else I mix in. And then I pour the rest over my green tea bag and uh, we're good for breakfast and tea right there. So anyway, it, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that I, I, I did it the way I'm doing it because there, there's nothing that will change. In other words, when I get to Iran, Texas tomorrow uh, and set up it, nothing, I don't have to do anything different. You know, I mean, I don't have to say, well, let's see, how do I do this or what do I do? It's, it's already done. You know, it makes it, it's, you know, because I'm boondocking now. You know, I just pat myself on the back. But, you know, if you plan something and execute it, it is not luck. You know what I mean? It's like this RV. I mean, if you saw how it all worked out, so it, it fits like a little puzzle, man. You know, the bed that came with it was a queen-size bed. I knew that was going to be too big because I needed some additional space. So what I did is I kept my twin bed, put the queen bed in the RV that I was selling. So that gave me a gap by the bed of about 14 inches by 6 feet. Is that useful space? Golly, yeah it is. Uh, and then for my uh, battery and my Dometic CF-18, the dining area, there's you know, where I sit, as you see every morning at comment call, and then right across from me is another sitting spot, and I just took the cushions off of that, and put them in a plastic bag, put them outside, and, and set the uh, AGM battery right there by that window, and then the Dometic CF-18 right there, and then I've got a little bungee card that uh, so that the Dometic CF-18 can't move, and I've got the battery set up so it can't move. <clears throat> I mean, everything's in place, and it's it's easy to get to. It's just right there. I mean, you know what I mean? If you want to check the battery, it's right there. No big deal. You know, if you want to hook up the solar, it's right there. Pow! And then run the card right out that little window. And good to go. Just hook it up to the panels. And Sometimes you don't even. Sometimes I don't even have to use the extension card. You know, it, it makes it really nice, really nice. Yeah, it all worked out just real well. And then that area by the 
bed, that gap there, I've got uh, I've got some of the you know almonds and stuff, all that stuff that was sent to me. I've got it there. I've got uh, <clears throat> what else? I've got some Kleenex, of course, and then I've got uh, 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 my beer that I, that I buy. I buy the 15 packs of the 16 ounce Miller Lite cans with the screw off tops. But the reason I get the screw off tops is when I'm camping. If you're outside, uh, you know, you can put that cap back on there and you won't be drinking bugs, okay? Because uh, bees and other things will climb in your beer. Have I ever drank a bee? Almost, almost. Uh, if, 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 if he'd have waited one more beer, I would have. But he was, he got ahead of himself. But be that as it may, it's a smooth deal. It's all worked out pretty good. And we're gonna go check it out now. This guy picked a good oh, there's a there is a road there. I, I was wondering where he was going. I didn't see the road. <laughs> and then here comes Speedy. Get him Speedy. Anyway. <clears throat> what else can I tell you guys? Yeah, so the thing's pilot the diamond is really sparkling pretty good right now. Uh, I'm pleased, and I thank all of you for all your help. I tell you, one of the things that somebody sent me, and I wish I could remember their name, is that that little thing you use on a, a the burner on your on your stove, the the heat diffuser. Oh, that thing is worth its weight in gold. I am telling you. And then I got that little dome top cover that I bought that I already had that I was using with my cast iron skillet to use kind of like an oven. Oh, that heat diffuser works 10 times better and 10 times quicker because to heat up that cast iron little skillet, even though it's only about 10 inches in diameter or 8 inches, it's probably 10. <clears throat> Since it's cast iron, it takes forever to heat it up. Of course, it stays heated for a long time after that, but, you know, be that as it may, this little the heat diffuser, give it a 10. The little dome top that I was already using, I give that a 10. No, those, those, those are my cooking, but that's a cooking machine. And then, of course, I've got a grill, a gas grill, a propane gas grill in the back of the pickup if I ever want to, you know, grill some chicken or grill some something else. Uh, I'll be able to do that, and I can do it outside so I don't, you know, the heat's not inside the RV, the smoke smells and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good plan. I mean, and then I've got that five-gallon jug, even though I... The five gallon water container I had, I wasn't gonna take it, but I've decided to take it and I've already got it full of water now, even though I have to use a pair of pliers to turn the knob to get the water to come out. Uh, to buy a new knob, the, the little spigot, because the little turner owner broke off. And I'm sure I could rig up something, but I'm not gonna fool with it. Pliers works fine. So uh, to get one of those little valves, is $19. Well, you could buy a whole five gallon container for $4 more, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to do it. I got one. So that gives me five gallons of water and then two gallons in that two gallon container is seven. And I've got seven uh, one gallon jugs. That's 14 gallons. And right now I've got about, oh, I'd say 15 gallons of water in my freshwater holding tank so you know water situation topped off as to when I, and then uh, tomorrow before I leave I'll drain the gray water just drain it out on the ground at home my home base empty that tank and then I'll add I've got five one gallon containers that I filled up before they cut the water off at my home base and they're sitting there, and the plan was before I pulled out, I would add those to the fresh water tank, and I'll do that, and that's what we'll be back to about 15 gallons, which will give me 120 pounds of water in the tank. And you don't want too much. You know, if you put 30, it holds 33 gallons, but 33 gallons of water weighs 260 pounds for, in that area. That's a lot, you know, so I, I only want to carry about 15 gallons of fresh water uh, while I'm towing. And that's adequate because 15 gallons of water in the fresh water tank, the way I use water from the fresh water tank, will last me about seven days. And that's fine because by then I'll be somewhere where there's a spigot or I will have gone and gotten some water in the gallon jugs and added it to the tank and on and on we go. See how easy this is, guys? 
So having said all that interesting stuff, this is Rusty78609 saying thumbs up guys, adios, bye bye, anything you want from but if you think about it, use the Amazon link. And for those of you that have used the link, thank you very much. If you go to Amazon and buy anything, I get a small commission. Uh, if you don't want to fool with it, then don't. Not a problemo. What else? Drink plenty of water. Three or four quarts a day won't hurt you. It's good for you. It'll help you avoid gout, kidney stones. It'll also help you lose weight because you'll be full of water and you won't want to eat so much. What else? Uh, stretch walk. Do that for sure. I've already done it. What else? Uh, take deep breaths, breathe in deeply, hold it for a few seconds, breathe out slowly. Why? Because that relieves stress and that lowers your blood pressure. It's good for you. What else? Uh, stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't let negative Nancy or negative Ned get inside of your head. Okay? Keep those good thoughts and your, that'll help your health too. So what else? Enjoy your life, guys. We're going to be moving out manana tomorrow, and we'll see where we don't, I don't have anywhere to go and no timetable. Not bad, huh? Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.